everyone, welcome to Body Life Crochet. I'm Taylor and today I'm going to show you how to make the Live Your Magic Mobius Shaw. This is one way you can wear it up over your shoulders or you can pull it down and have more coverage down your back and your sides. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a kind of a down sized version just so I can get through the shape and the stitches and show you um, the outline and then you can go ahead and customize it by chaining as many as you need around the circumference of your chest, your back, and your upper arms. And so with this one, um, it's comprised of the dancing stitch, and then I called this the bead bobble stitch. It's not a full-on bobble, so it's a lot smaller, but um, it's a really cool border. And I don't know if you can see it here. You'll definitely see it in the video. But I just wanted to show you the couple of ways you can wear it. So down over your arms. And, and then you can also put it up over your shoulders for way more coverage. And a lot cozier. Both ways are cozy. But um, this is Lion Brand Jeans Yarn. And if you would like... Um, you can go on lionbrand.com. I'll put a link below and you can actually purchase the kit for this pattern and it'll just come with the um, the pattern in PDF form and all of the yarn you'll need for your size. So if um, you enjoy this pattern, please follow me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and um, tag me in your creations. I would love to see them and I hope you enjoy. So for this pattern, I used Lion Brand Jeans yarn. It has 3.5 ounces in each ball and is medium four weight. And then you're going to need a size USI 5.5 millimeter hook. This is Susan Bates and this is just a hook um, handle I made out of clay. I have a little tutorial for it so I'll put it in the description box below. And so it's easier on your eyes, I'm going to use this color. It's the same jeans yarn but just in a different color. You're going to need scissors and stitch markers. I like to use these because they close. I made these little ones. I also have a tutorial for these, so I'll put that in the description box as well. And you'll need a darning needle so you can weave in your ends at the end. And so now we can just get started. We are going to make a slip knot to get the yarn onto our hook. And since this is going to be a smaller version, I'm going to start with a shorter chain than what you normally will. So for this tutorial, I'm going to chain 40, and you can find the other instructions in the description box below for the written pattern on my blog at bodylifecrochet.com. So now that I have my starting chain, I'm going to pull it and make sure that it's all laying flat before I slip stitch into the very first chain that I made. Now that we have completed the slip stitch, it's going to make this nice circle and this will be our starting point for the Mobius Shaw. You're going to chain two and then double crochet into each chain around. After you chain two, double crochet into the same stitch as your chain and continue to double crochet into each chain. Once you've finished your double crochets into each chain, what you're going to do instead of slip stitch to the top like you normally would, you're actually going to twist this row away from you 
and you're going to continue the double crochet stitch into each stitch along the bottom of the row you just completed. This is going to make the twist that forms in the front of the Mobius shawl. Here you can see that you have a completely new row and you're going to continue to double crochet into each stitch around until you meet the very first one you made. Here I'm going to make my last double crochet. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. So this is always fun because now you can already see that it's taking shape. So one side will always lay flat and you just move that twist to the very middle and now you have the Mobius shape. We'll be working in this shape for the rest of the pattern. Now that we have that finished we're going to move on to row two where I'm going to show you how to do the dancing stitch. You're going to start with a chain two and then you're going to yarn over and insert your hook into the same stitch as your chain. Pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and now you're going to have one, two, three, four, five. You're going to pull through the first four, and then yarn over and pull through the last two. With this stitch, you will always begin in the same stitch that you just left off on and then move on to the next. So I'll show you here, you'll yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch you just finished, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, you'll have five stitches, yarn over, pull through the first four, yarn over, pull through the last two. And I'm sorry, I meant loops, not stitches at that last one. We're going to continue this for the rest of the row. So yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch you just made, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Now you have five loops you're going to pull through the first four, yarn over, pull through the last two. Continue this stitch all the way around. So here I wanted to show you what it will look like when you are halfway through. You can see how these aren't connecting just yet and that's because you have to continue around the row until you meet that beginning point. So you're going to go all the way around until you meet that first dancing stitch that you made.
once you finish your last dancing stitch, you're going to slip stitch to the top of your first stitch. So here is what the row two will look like when you're finished. You can see the dancing stitch here and then your beginning double crochet row in the middle. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm only going to do about three rows of this dancing stitch. So here is the three rows. You have the double crochet in the middle and then three rows of dancing stitch and next we will work on the border. So for the border, I recommend using a stitch marker. The first row is going to be single crochet stitches and sometimes it can be hard to see the very first one. So I'm going to use a stitch marker and chain one and then I'm going to single crochet into the same stitch as my chain and then single crochet all the way around until I reach that stitch marker where I will then slip stitch to close the row. So here is the end. This is why I use this stitch marker because you can barely see that starting chain. And I'm just going to continue the single crochet until the end. And then I'm going to slip stitch to close the row to then begin a new row. After you finish the row of single crochet stitches, you will see that it just kind of brings it inward and it starts to really shape it. And this is what's going to shape the border. So on to the second row of the border. I'm going to place my stitch marker right here and then I'm going to chain two and we're going to begin our first bead bobble stitch. So you're going to yarn over and insert your hook into the same stitch as your chain and pull up a loop and we're going to do that three times total. So that was one, two, and three. After doing this three times, you should have seven loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're going to yarn over and pull through all seven. Then you are going to chain one and skip the next stitch and continue to do a bead bobble into the following. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop three times, yarn over, pull through all seven. You're going to continue this pattern for the rest of the row. So you're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, yarn over, insert your hook and pull up a loop three times. Yarn over, pull through all seven. Thank you. 
so here we are back at the beginning and I just wanted to show you how you finish this row. You can see the bead bobble in the front here and we're going to continue with the next bead bobble. And after the very last one, you will do one more chain and then you will slip stitch to the top of the first stitch. So to create this border, what you will do is alternate these two stitches, the single crochet, the bead bobble. So after this last row, we will chain one and just single crochet all the way around and you will alternate the two until you're finished. So this is what the border will look like after you do the first row of single crochet and then the bead bubble row and then another row of single crochet and you will just continue to alternate these two rows until you are finished with the border. So here is the finished size in size small medium. I just wanted to show you what the border will look like after you continue it. And this is the best I could do with my camera setup, so <laughs> I'm so sorry that I can't get the whole thing in the shot. But if I bring it up here, you'll be able to see the crisscross through the middle. And then here's the border towards the bottom. And when we flip it over, you can kind of see the beginning double crochet stitch on your chain that you did. Here's the border from the back, little collar up top, and the border on the bottom. So I tried to turn it sideways here to get the whole thing in the shot, but um, there are more photos on my blog at bodylifecrochet.com or if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook at bodylifecrochet, you'll see a ton more photos. And I hope you enjoy. Happy crocheting!